dollars. <laughs> That's all good. I know that Brenda has something in store that'll that'll bless them as well. Man, what a wonderful day of worship already. Wouldn't you all agree? You know, um, and by the way, you can turn to Psalm chapter 59. That's where we're going to be this morning. But you know, the other morning I was on the treadmill, as I typically am most Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Y'all pray for me. I'm crazy. But um, when I'm on the treadmill, nine and a half times out of ten, uh, I'm listening to preaching. A lot better than most other things we could listen to, wouldn't you agree? Um, but of course, at the gym, the TVs are on, and normally they're on e each different news station, and... Um, of course, they don't want to do anything but spread gloom and doom and fear and hate and want you to live in fear and hate. But I was thinking, watching all that while I was listening to the preaching, I sure am glad that because of Jesus, thanks to Calvary, I don't have to worry about all that. You know the Lord this morning, thanks to Calvary, you don't have to worry about all that as well. Hey, new, bad news sells. Doom and gloom sells. It's life. But we don't have to worry about it because we have a savior. I want to ask you to, uh, I, I hope and pray that you've already found your place in Psalm chapter number 59. We're still in our journey in the Psalms, and I hope and pray that today's will be a blessing as the rest of them have been. You found your place, the 59th Psalm. We're going to look at verses 16 and 17. I ask if you're able, if you would, please stand as we read God's word together. Psalm chapter number 59. Verses 16 and 17. David the psalmist says these words. But I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning. For thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Verse 17. Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing. For God is my defense and the God of my mercy. And today with the help of God using this psalm, I want to preach on this subject when the song returns. Let's pray. Father God, once again, I come to your throne of grace, thanking you for allowing us this time together. Thanking you, Lord, that love lifted me. All who know Jesus Christ as, as Lord and Savior can sing that confidently, that when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Lord, we thank you for that this morning. And Lord, as we go through this message for these next few minutes this morning, Lord, I pray that you'll just move among us, that you'll speak to us, that you'll use your word and use your servant who speaks your word to bless hearts. Lord, I pray that you'll move among us, speak to us. I pray that you'll challenge us. I pray that you'll bring conviction, Lord. Lord, over and above anything that I could ask, if there's anyone among us, either here in person or watching when this video goes out, that does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, cannot confidently sing, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Lord, I pray that they'll come to know that saving grace that's found in Jesus Christ, in Him, and in Him alone. And it's in His name that I ask it and pray. And the church said, amen. amen and amen. You may be seated. So, how many of us have been going through life? We feel the blessings of God. We have a song in our heart. But then, next thing you know comes a trial. Next thing you know comes maybe a sickness. Some of us have been dealing with sicknesses here lately, but you're going along, everything's wonderful, and then all of a sudden, something comes up, and you feel like the song has left your heart. You know, David speaks to that very thing in our psalm this morning. You know, he endured many trials. I don't have to stand here and tell you that David endured many trials. Anyone that has looked at the Bible, even on an elementary level, which really, let's be honest, all of us look at it on an elementary level. But any of us that have looked at the Bible for any length of time knows that David went through some trials. In particular, we know that Saul sought to end David's life. We've talked about that on a number of occasions in the earlier messages of this journey in the Psalms. But here's the bottom line, folks, that we learn from David and his afflictions. We all pass through trials. We all pass through afflictions. There's not a single one of us that's immune from the trials and the afflictions that life is going to throw at us. Perhaps it could be a person. Perhaps it could be a circumstance. Perhaps, most certainly, it can be an illness. But none of us are immune to the trials and afflictions. 
There may be someone here today that feels like giving up. That trial of affliction may have come upon you. And you feel like the song is gone and you might feel like giving up. Can I give you a challenge? Don't give up. Can I give you another challenge? Look up. Don't give up. Look up. Stop trembling and start trusting. Last week, you, re you may remember that uh, we talked about when we utilize our faith, our fear and our trembling flees. Our fear and our trembling ceases. Why? Because faith is the opposite of fear. But I want to show you through these two verses that David expected his song to return. David had been through an affliction. He went through many afflictions. He, he went through fleeing for his life. He went through fears. But he knew that God was with him. And even in this time of affliction that David finds himself in in our psalm this morning, he expected his song to return. I've got good news for each and every one of us. <clears throat> we might have some kind of affliction. We might have some kind of a trial. We may have something coming up against us that will make our song feel like it's gone from our heart. i got news for you. We can expect our song to return. You can expect your song to return. I can expect my song to return. And you know what else? We can have confidence in that. That's the powerful thing about God. We can have confidence that he's going to take care of us. We can have confidence that he's going to allow us to have our song back. We can have confidence in God's power. And so let's look, if we, if we will, this morning at just these two simple verses here. Make some application. Hopefully prayerfully, prayerfully issue a challenge. And then we'd be done. Sound good to everybody? All right, awesome. So let's, let's, let's delve into our passages this morning. The first one is, is uh, verse number 16. And we see here that David expected to sing of God's power. Boy, isn't that a wonderful thing right there? That we can expect to sing of God's power. We can expect to know that God has that power to revive our song, if you will. I said a minute ago about revival. And we can expect to have our song. David says in verse number 16, I will sing of thy power. Not I may sing of thy power. Not if the mood strikes me, I'll sing of thy power. No, I will sing of thy power. That word will, it's an imperative there. It means it's going to happen. Have you ever had that issue come up on you? That problem come up on you? That affliction come up on you and that you felt like your song was gone? Well, when that happened to you, have you said to yourself, I know, some, I know this is going on. I know it's robbed me of my song. It's robbed me of my joy for right now. But I don't have to worry about it because through God, I know I will continue to sing of God's power. See, so, see something here, folks. God's power is greater than our problems. You know, that's something that we need to learn or relearn. God's power is greater than our problems. You know, I, I am sort of a sort of a movie buff and if, if it's a historical movie I like it. War movies I mean I don't like the violence, I don't like the, the language, but I like the history behind them. And there's one that I um, it's one that I think about, it's a Vietnam War movie and uh, this, uh, this platoon sergeant is getting his, excuse me, squad leader, he's getting his squad ready to, he's got a new squad by the way, and he's getting them ready to go into battle and he's trying to teach them and he gives all these examples of all these things that they might say in their civilian life about everything that's come up against them. And he says, people, you have no problems. And you think about that right there. It, it, wouldn't that be comfortable for us to say within ourselves, hey, something may be going on, but you know what? We ain't got no problems. Why? Because we've got the song of God. Because we've got the love of God. Because we've got the power of God. That's greater than our problems. So God's power is greater than our problems or our seeming problems, if you will. But God is also stronger than our adversaries. You know, we have one main adversary. And then off of him branches other adversaries. But God is stronger than each and every one of those adversaries. And you know what we can do? Therefore, we can rest in the power of God. 
to deliver us. So I said just a minute ago, how many of us have been going along and everything's wonderful and all of a sudden something comes up that'll rob us of our joy, that'll rob us of our song, that'll make us feel like God has forgotten about us. But here's a confident promise that, if, if I may say it this way, you can take to the bank. We can rest in the power of God to deliver us. You know Christ today. You can rest in the power of God to deliver you. Hey, that same power delivered you from sin and death and hell. And you can rest in that power of God to deliver you through whatever situation you might find yourself wandering through. You know, David, when he spoke, when he, when he spoke this particular song, he could remember powerful deliverances in the past. Let me share a couple with you. Actually, they're from the same chapter in 1 Samuel chapter number 17. You don't have to turn there, but you can make note of it and look at it your own, uh, in, in your own time. But think about this. David could remember a couple of, I'm, I'm going to say a couple because that's where we're looking at. There are many more, but there's two of them I'm going to think about. He could think of a couple of powerful deliverances in his past. The first one is his deliverance from the lion and the bear. 1 Samuel chapter number 17, verses 32 through um, 37, David uh, is chosen to, well, not chosen, I guess, but volunteers. Man, I hate volunteering. That's an outgrowth of being in the Army, by the way. I hate volunteering. We do it once, and then we learn not to do it no more. Can I get an amen on that one? People say to me, uh, or I might hear, hey, would you volunteer to be uh, to do this on this holiday, you're not going to get an answer from me. I volunteer for nothing. Now, you tell me to do it, I'll do it. But I ain't volunteering. All right, that's, that's a lesson for you. But David volunteers to fight Goliath. And I love what Saul says to him. Saul is like, and this is before Saul was mad at him, by the way. Saul was like, you're just a little boy. You can't go and defeat this giant. And then David says, oh, you want, to know, you want to know what I can defeat? Let me show you. David said unto Saul, verse 34 of 1 Samuel chapter 17. David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. Verse 35. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by the beard and smote him and slew him. Uh, I heard a preacher say one time, uh, you know, nothing against beards, but if that lion had shaved, he'd still be alive today. Come on, y'all, help me out. <laughs> the, thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall, shall be as one of them, seeing he had defeated the armies of the living God. There's confidence in God right there. Wouldn't you agree? David says... I killed a lion and the bear through the power of God. Don't you think I can take care of this, this Philistine that you all seem to be so afraid of? Verse number 37. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And that convinced Saul, that obviously. And Saul says, go, the Lord be with you. So David remembered that when he volunteered to take care of Goliath, because nobody else seemed to be able to, and Saul said, you can't do that, you're just a little boy. David said, oh yeah? Let me tell you what my God did for me. My God made it so I could defeat the lion and the bear. And he's going to make it so I can defeat this Philistine as well. Sounds a lot to me like in the book of Daniel when um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are getting ready to go into the burning fiery furnace. And they say, you can throw us in, into the furnace, but our God's going to deliver us. So David remembers that powerful deliverance in his past. But he also remembers the actual slaying of Goliath. If you look in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 45, Then David said to the Philistine, to Goliath, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But listen to this part. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. The God of the armies of Israel, whom thou, hast, uh, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee, and take thy head from thee. And he goes further down, and he gives more of a, uh, of a cause and effect. He says that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. 
So you see, David remembers from, uh, from his past. He remembers God delivering him from the lion and the bear. But then he also remembers God delivering him from Goliath. You know, memory is a wonderful thing. It's a powerful thing. Some people think that memory is not such a great thing, but it really is. Memory is a powerful thing. It enables us to draw on God's faithfulness in the past. Let me ask you to think to yourself in your own mind and in your, in your own heart. Can you remember some point in your past where God has been faithful? Can you remember some point in your own life that you had that confidence in God and God proved to be faithful? See, that's what David did and that's what we need to do. You know, we have those things come up on us and like I said a minute ago, it takes away our song, it takes away our joy. It may even cause us to say we ain't got no hope. But we can remember those times in the past where God has delivered us. You know, faith enables us to do something. It enables us to do a lot of things. But for this point right here, it enables us to expect God to come through. We've talked a lot around here about expecting wonderful things from God. And that being the basis of our prayers to expect for God to bless us. But that faith enables us to expect God to come through. It enables us to expect that God is going to deliver on his promises. Hey, God's still in the, in the deliverance business, by the way. He hadn't forgot about us. And we need to expect God to come through. We talked last week, I mentioned it a minute ago, about that faith that cancels out our fear. So David expected to sing of God's power. You know what? We should expect that as well. Sometimes the song may escape us. Sometimes those things will come against us and it'll make us feel like we have no more joy, we have no more hope, we have no more song. But we can expect to sing of God's power just like David did. But more than that, he expected to sing of God's mercy. I remind you again of another part of verse number 16. He says, I will sing aloud of thy mercy. Uh, or in other words, he said, I will worship you because of your mercy. See, that's why we gather in worship, because of God's mercy on us, because of his love for us, because of his deliverance for us, because of his coming through for us. And you know, you cannot deny it. God's been merciful to each and every one of us. Even if we, even if we just consider it on a day-to-day -day basis and think about his mercy and all that his mercy allows us to do, but think about this from Scripture. You know, the cross announces the mercy of God to sinners. We knew that already. Titus chapter 3, verse number 5, Paul says, Not by works of righteousness, which who? We have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us. I will sing aloud of mercy. And then in Romans chapter 12, in verse 1, Paul says these words, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So the mercy of God ought to challenge us. Ought to challenge us to serve him. And what do you mean by serve him? Well, I ain't talking about giving every single uh, amount of your day, although God may call you to do that. But simply worshiping him. Simply being in his house when you need to be in his house. Praying, communicating with God. Giving to God's kingdom, using of your talent, your time, your treasure in service to God. Why? Because of his mercy. Because he loves us. Because he has mercy on us. Because he delivers us. Because he comes through when he promised he'll come through. And you know, David expected that protection. David expected that mercy. David expected that miracle. David expected that power. Let's look further in verse number 16 as soon as we get over there. And that's something, when I, get, when I get sped up and get to thinking about something, I don't even put it back on my home scripture. But think about this. Verse number 16, I will sing aloud of thy mercy when? In the morning. He expected that protection to arrive on time. Now, I'm not talking about a literal morning, but we do need to say that. We expect his mercy every morning, but we expect his mercy in every situation, in every time, in every day, in every point of every day. That protection of God arrives in time. I like to say it this way, on time and on target. By the way, I'm going to give you all another spoiler alert. That's a title in our Advent series, so y'all be sure to be here in December. 
that he believed God would protect him. He speaks of my defense. Thou has been my what? Defense. And he trusted in God to hide him from his enemies. He said, thou has been my refuge. So David expected to sing of God's power. He, he expected to sing of God's mercy. And then finally he expected God to give him strength. Verse number 17, he says, Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing. You know what this equals? This equals confidence in God's protection. You know, man's protection can only go so far, can it? But we can have confidence, just like David did, in God's protection. Protection. I just reminded you a minute ago of the account of when David volunteered to go and fight Goliath. And then when he fought Goliath, he did what? He shared confidence in God's protection. And we can have confidence in God's protection as well. Here's a man convinced of God's deliverance. And we can be convinced of that deliverance as well. Like I said a minute ago, you know Christ is Lord and Savior today. He's delivered you from sin. He's delivered you from death. He's delivered you from the fires of hell. And we can expect him to deliver us day after day in whatever situation, in whatever difficulty. We can expect him to deliver us. And then confidence in God's power, mercy, and strength brings a song. You know, I was talking a minute ago about when the song returns. Sometimes the song may not be there. But you know what? Our confidence in God our submission to his power and mercy, our acknowledgement of his strength will do what? Bring back a song. And you've probably seen it in your own life. When I said a minute ago, those things come up and you feel like your song is gone. But then you trust God. And you say, like I've said a minute, many a time from this pulpit, God, I don't know the reason why I'm going through this. I don't know what you're trying to teach me, but I'm trusting you to teach me. And then when you let God have it, what does he do? He shows you that deliverance. It might take a few minutes, a few days, a few years. He shows you that deliverance. And then what? You have a song. That yes, I might be going through something difficult. But I know that God's got me. Spurgeon said these words. Old choice song, my soul shall sing it now. And in defiance of all the dogs of hell. Think about that. You have that song in your heart. You, you have that song of deliverance. You have that song of God's power in your heart. You can sing it confidently and in defiance of the adversary. In defiance of the devil. I don't know about y'all, but that's a powerful song in my book. Christians, we have absolutely no business living under the circumstances. Circumstances will come upon us. Circumstances will seem unsurmountable. Circumstances will cause us to maybe lose our song. But I got news for you. We serve a God that's more powerful than that. We serve a God that's got more, uh, got, got more power than whatever we're going through. And we can base our song on that. Just trust in God. I said, I said last week, our trust in God, our faith, will erase our fear. But we have no business living under the circumstances. Like I said, they're going to be there. Despite us wanting circumstances to be different, oh, how many have had that happen to them? Man, I wish this would be different. Despite us wanting the circumstances to be better, child of God, we're not called to live under the circumstances. We're called to live despite the circumstances. And you know what? When we do that, when we place our faith in God and let him have the circumstance while we walk through it, then our song will return. Then the song comes back. Then we are able to sing of the power of God. There's a hymn called, I Sing the Mighty Power of God. We can do that. And we trust God with the circumstance, just like David did. This is what David is showing us in this song here. When he trusts God with the circumstance and he expects his song to return and you know what faith will bring a song before deliverance arrives you know deliverance may come later than we want it to but it's going to come that faith will bring our song so we can walk through whatever valley we're walking through with a song in our heart we can walk through whatever difficulty 
with a song in our heart. We can walk through whatever comes up against us with a song in our heart due to what our faith. And you know what that makes us? Triumphant in trials. I believe that was a sermon uh, some months ago. Triumphant in trials. Because we're going to have them. But you place your faith in God. Trust God with it. God's got you. You know he's got you. God's alive. He hasn't left. And we can be triumphant in those trials. And our living Lord causes our song to return. I remind you what Paul tells us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 57 and 58, you probably know it by heart. I had to write it down because y'all know my memory is not what it needs to be. He says, but thanks be to God who gives us what? The victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And you know what that's called? That's called having a song in your heart. That's called that no matter what might be going on in your life, you have a song in your heart. Why? Because you know you have victory. And I ask you this morning, do you have that song in your heart? First and foremost, do you have the song in your heart because you have victory? And I'm not talking about necessarily winning a battle, although it is winning a battle, but I'm talking about the victory that we have in Christ Jesus because that's where it starts. That's where your song begins, is faith in Jesus Christ for the victory over whatever you might be going through. Is that yours this morning? Or maybe that is yours. Maybe you've been saved many, many years. But the circumstances, the difficulties, the illnesses, whatever it is, has caused you to say, do I really have that song? Do I really have the power of God? I got news for you. Yes, you do. Because God's bigger than that. Because God's power is more powerful than that. Because God's love is more than that. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Is there a song in your heart today? <laughs> is that song in your heart because of victory that you have in Jesus Christ? My prayer is that it is. But if you're here today and you thank God for you being here, but you've heard this message and you're under conviction and you say, you know what? I don't have that song of victory because I do not know Jesus Christ. Well, I want to invite you to come to know Jesus Christ this very day. I want you to come to know that you have victory over trials. And because you have that victory, you, have, you can have a song in your heart. Or maybe this morning your song has faded because of whatever difficulties, whatever circumstances. I got good news for you. God's not left you. God hasn't forsaken you. And your song will return. What do you have to do? Just simply give it to Him. Simply give it to Him. You know, that's all God calls of, of us to do. It's just to trust Him with whatever we got. I've said it many, many times. I'll continue to say it because it's the truth. All we have to do is surrender it to Him. Trust Him with the difficulties. Trust Him with the illness. Trust Him with the injury. Trust Him with the heartbreak. And He's going to make sure your song is there. Your song of victory. Your song of His power. Not your power. Our power is nothing. The power of Satan, although he's powerful, he's not more powerful than God. Do you need your song back today? Do you need that song for the very first time? Whatever the need is, it can be yours today. Heavenly Father, I say this at each invitation, and I'll continue to say it. This invitation is not about me. This invitation is about you. Lord, I don't know the condition of each and every heart in attendance this morning. My prayer, Lord, is that everyone in the sound of my voice knows Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, knows that they have the victory. But Lord, I ask that if there's somebody that does not, may your spirit convict them, 
May they come to know Jesus Christ today. May they come to know the victory today. May they get that song in their heart, that song of victory, that song of deliverance, that song of power today. But Lord, for the, for the ones who, who know Christ as Lord and Savior, and maybe the circumstances have made them feel like their song is left them, Lord, help them to remember that their song is not left them. Give them the, the grace, the humility, Lord, to just trust you with what they're dealing with. Knowing that their song will return. Knowing that they have the victory. Knowing that they have deliverance. Lord, thank you for that. Lord, I pray in this next few minutes as we, as we sing our final song, as we allow your Holy Spirit to move among us and work among us, that whatever you will have done, Lord, will be done. I pray that you'll save the one that needs salvation. I pray, Lord, that you'll reorient the one that has salvation, but maybe have um, let circumstances seal that victory, seal that shout, seal that song. Lord, thank you for that this morning. I pray it all in Christ's name. Amen. Our hymn of invitation this morning is hymn number 309, Lord, I'm Coming Home. Is that your need today? Is that your prayer today? Maybe you, maybe you have a need upon your heart that I haven't even touched on, but you need to surrender it to God. This altar's open. If you need prayer, we'll offer, we'll give you prayer. If you feel like you, you're, you're saved, you know you're saved, but you've not been baptized and you want to settle that, we can take care of that today. The invitation is open. Whatever the Holy Spirit's speaking to you about, 